Tall Tale TV. Of Monsters and Mushrooms by Leslie Heron. Chapter 19, La Biota. Aliens, man. 100% aliens. Attila was using both his hands to gesture to the ancient scribbles carved into the surface of the stone statue. I mean, look! This one's descending from the heavens to probe this guy! Eric dragged his hand down his face in a moment of pure frustration. He knew they should be going, and that arguing over this was pointless. But then again, he never had learned to let stuff go. And I'm telling you that these carvings cannot possibly be depicting aliens. This is some sort of ritual. Could be a harmless gathering, a medical contribution, or some sort of harvest-based sacrifice. But this is in no way... Eric broke off his words to slap at the statue poignantly, his hand landing in the middle of a group of robed figures offering praise to a deity. Showing anything but the local population. They're worshipping their sun god, which, by the way, is this thing. Eric jabbed a finger at the largest figure, which bore a resemblance to the statue itself. He tried to quench his temper, but Attila's continued resilience caused it to flare up. Vel listened to the arguing couple for a moment, before turning his attention back to his captive arm. He threw his weight into the struggle to remove his hand, but it wasn't budging, not even an inch. He took a deep breath and tried again. Another fruitless attempt, and Vel slumped against the surface of the statue. He looked back over his shoulder, hearing the others ramp up their conversation again. That's not a sun god. That's a defense construct. And this is a subparticle tractor beam. And this... Attila paused, tapping at some circular object just above the group of hooded monks. Is totally a UFO. Definitive proof. He folded his arms over his chest, as if this revelation cemented his winning in the argument. That... that's not a UFO, Eric argued weakly. His composure was waning. Oh yeah? Then why is this guy here a lizard, hmm? It's a ceremonial mask. Or definitive proof. Vel rolled his eyes. As Eric and Attila continued to argue, they dragged Brig and Evan into their heated debate each trying to persuade the others with their interpretations. One thing was certain, however. This would take a while. Well, he'd just have to save himself then. He waded through the growing number of poofs, moving closer to the statue. He rolled his sleeve up around his elbow and pried off a loose plate on his arm. Maybe if he redirected the flow of current through his arm, he could reverse the polarity of the metal in his hand. That would, perhaps, allow him enough time to free himself of the magnet. He dug his fingers into the opening and fished out several wires and cables. This kind of procedure would normally be done with proper tools, but as he had neither the time nor the supplies, he'd have to do without. He disconnected the wires and began reattaching them clumsily to opposite ports. He pulled out another set of wires, examined their frayed endings, shrugged, and twisted them together. When he pushed them back into their housing, he felt a jolt of electricity surge through him. It started at his shoulder, then rippled and crashed its way down his arm. And for a fraction of a moment, Vel was certain his plan had worked. He had moved his hand against the surface of the statue, and was just about to pull away when another surge of electricity tore through him. It snapped his muscles rigid, forcing his spine straight and his jaw closed. The trail of electricity left a ring of blue light around his fingertips. Was it just an after-effect of the shock, or was that light breathing? Vel used his free hand to sweep away the dirt on the statue, and noted the luminous glowing was just below the surface. Well, that can't be good. 
He had barely managed to get out the words before another jolt of electricity ripped down his arm. When the charge finally dissipated, he felt his knees buckle. He was grateful to the pile of sandy poofball creatures that had gathered beneath him, as they kept him from collapsing completely, despite his clammy, shaking body. His hand remained magnetized to the statue. The light around his hand began to pulse and change directions. It quickened, becoming less of a breath and more of an angry warning. The soft blue glow quickly dissolved into a violent shade of red and began to oscillate outwards, moving further up the statue's body. Waves of angry light washed across the monolith's broad chest, over its shoulders and up the neck towards the statue's face. In the wake of each pulse, patterns were left illuminated, like glowing tattoos that marked the trail the light had taken. Vel watched as the light settled into giant faceted gems in the statue's eyes, igniting them with a brilliant crimson blaze. The sound of ancient machinery kicking on for the first time in millennia cleaved the silence of the desert like a sonic boom. Guys? He finally called out, unable to pull his gaze from the ominous glow in the statue's face. Why are you so against this idea? After all, you and your brother are aliens! Attila's comment was dwarfed by the sound of wind rushing around them, grit pelting them from all sides. What was that? Evan asked, steadying himself as the ground gave a mighty tremble. The tiny merc scaled Briggs' large back, standing on his shoulder to survey their surroundings. Whichever one of you screwed up this time, I'm gonna slice your kneecaps off. Deep trenches began to appear in the ground at the base of the statue, and dirt was pouring into the crevices at an alarming rate. Another rumble scattered the puffballs, and more of the ground disappeared into the jagged fissures. Hearing what could only be described as a wounded sailor, Attila tilted his head to peer over the side of the statue. Bell did it. Eric snapped his attention away from the deepening cracks in the sand to follow Attila's gaze. His brother was frantically struggling against his own mechanical arm and the surface of the statue. What? What are you doing? Get me off this thing! Vel shouted over the adorable screeching of frantic puffballs. He could feel his power supply pouring electricity into his capacitors, building up a dangerous amount of charge. Attila laughed as he stumbled over the shifting sands making his way unsteadily over to his friend. You really screwed up this time. You woke up the alien. Vel strained to reach the merc, the fingertips of his free hand falling just short of Attila's neck, all the while shouting a slew of profanities that could have made even the statue blush. Okay, okay, I'll help. Hold still. Attila moved around the cyborg, examining his mechanical hand, he wrapped his fingers around Vel's wrist and threw all of his considerable muscle into a strained attempt to free the prosthetic. It didn't budge. Attila pulled his hands away, shifted position, spit into each palm, and then grasped a hold of Vel's wrist again. He leaned into it this time, but only managed to dislodge his hat and slide up the mechanical arm, leaving it spit-shined in the process. Oh, gross, Vel protested with a grimace. With a sound like a car full of glass-filled cabinets rolling down a cliff, the statue shifted in the sand. It listed ever so slightly in their direction and began pushing the pair of them into the ground, threatening to bury them both. Hang on, I think I have something for this. Attila paused, his hands rifling through his poncho. The fungal cream might loosen his grip. Nah, the polarity of the magnet is too strong. The microtorch would work. If I had enough time, that is. Ah oh, well, the classics never die. Attila flourished a stocky and rather rusty screwdriver that looked as if it had been a railroad tie in a previous life. He closed one eye, stuck out his tongue, 
took careful aim for the space between the statue and Vel's fingers, and thrust. Ah! What are you doing? Vel shouted, glaring angrily from the dent in the back of his hand up to Attila. Sorry, close the wrong eye. Attila chuckled, flipping up the leather patch, revealing his own cybernetics. He readjusted his previous course and took aim once more. This time, the tip of the screwdriver wedged itself between stone and metal successfully, and Attila leaned back on the handle. Ow, ow, what? Hold on, Attila interrupted, pushing both feet against the statue. I've... He strained his muscles, pulling back on the screwdriver as hard as he could. Almost? Sweat began to beat up on his forehead. Got it! The force of freeing Vel's hand sent him toppling into the sand. He rolled over and sat up, spitting out a mouthful of dirt, and shot his own palm into the air, eagerly awaiting the high five he knew was deserved. Attila, you idiot! Vel screeched, following up with a few well-placed insults, profanities, and suggestions about Attila's heritage. His hand was still magnetized to the statue. Sans one digit. His middle finger lay on the ground near Attila. Hey, no need to bring mothers into this. Besides, I can fix it, I think. He reached over and plucked the finger out of the ground as he climbed to his feet. No, you've done enough damage. Just go get my brother. Or Evan. Or hell, even Brig would do better than you. Well, now you're just being rude. Attila tucked the dismembered digit under his belt. I did manage to break part of your hand loose, after all. Vel's retort was cut from his mouth as the buildup of electricity finally discharged. His vision blackened around the edges, and he could taste the coppery tang of blood from where his teeth had sliced into his cheek as they snapped shut. And then he felt Briggs's massive frying pan hand clench tight around his wrist. Systems online. Eric stumbled over a fissure in the earth in his rush to make it out from beneath the statue. Sand was cascading off the giant's shoulders as it moved at the waist. It creaked with each movement, a shotgun sound like ice cracking in a frozen lake. A colossal hand emerged from beneath the desert, only to slam against the surface digging massive fingers into the ground for a better purchase. It was attempting to pry free its feet. Fear and concern for his brother fled Eric for a moment as he stared up at the monolith in amazement. Brig heaved back on the magnetic seal, tugging with all his might. There was no give, but the metal plates of Vel's arm crumpled under the pressure. Oops, sorry. You're as bad as Attila! Vel shot through grit teeth, still unable to separate his jaw. He settled for glaring daggers. Sand erupted around them as a thigh the size of a subway car burst up out of the ground. The ancient machine managed to get its footing and rose up out of the earth, carrying Vel and Brig into the air. Just whip it off! Evan hissed in Brig's ear as he clenched onto tiny handfuls of fur lining for dear life. Vel looked up, his mismatched eyes locking with the mercs. He shook his head, slowly, muttering, Please, no. Sorry about this. Briggs voice carried the truth of his actions as he clenched his massive hand tighter around Vel's wrist, wrapped his other hand around Vel's chest, and planted his feet squarely on the statue's surface. He took a slow breath and lurched backwards. Vel couldn't be sure which one of them was screaming. Was it Evan, himself, or the mechanics in his arm? He could feel the synthetic tissue, cables and tendons starting to tear. Bolts and bars began to pop under the pressure, followed by the buckling of the outer metal plates. More pathetic whines and hissing of machinery pursued, as torn wires sparked against ruptured lubricant lines, clouding his vision with smoke. Briggs strained, 
throwing all his might into trying to free them. The statue continued to rise higher into the air, creating a substantial drop. One more tug ought to do it, he thought, as he took a steadying breath and heaved once more. Oh, what biceps! Evan exclaimed, a touch of venomous sarcasm lacing his words. Servos shattered, cables stripped from their connector ports, and the sickening sound of metal whining as it stretched too far grated at their ears. Something snapped in his elbow, and Vel cursed as the ground rushed up to greet them. For once, Vel hadn't been crushed beneath the heavy metal object, nor someone else's weight. He watched as his hand, still connected to a good portion of his forearm, ascended ever higher as the statue continued to climb free of the sand. He looked over at his limp coat sleeve with a sullen sigh. Get off of me, you big ogre! Evan cried out as he struggled to dig his way from beneath Brig. Brig groaned. Apparently, even a man his size felt it when a cyborg landed on top of him. He hissed in a breath of pain. Ow! My elbow! Vel rolled his head to the side and stared deadpan at Brig, lifting up his stump. Really? Brig gave a sheepish chuckle and shrugged. Attila and Eric had to help the trio to their feet, Attila clapping Vel on the shoulder. Sorry, man, but hey, look on the bright side. He paused to tap at the pocket where he had deposited the severed digit earlier. At least you can't be mad about this anymore. Scanning perimeter. Any chance this thing's gonna be friendly? Brig asked, craning his neck to look up at the monstrous statue. Unaffected by the sun's glare, the monolith turned its beaked head sluggishly along the horizon. Ruby eyes reflected the heat back at the earth with enough ferocity to melt the sand into glass. It wasn't long before those dangerous red eyes landed on them. Hostiles engaged. You thought our luck would turn now? Eric shot, scrambling out of the way of a superheated light beam. The behemoth lifted its massive staff and with surprising agility swung it around in a spinning arc. Another flourish and the statue brought it crashing down towards the party. Vel reached out to shove Eric out of the way, but realized mid-push that there was no hand attached to his arm. The result was him socking his brother in the face with a metal stub. Eric reeled backwards, stumbling over his own feet and collapsed into the ground. The blade edge of the weapon rushed overhead before cleaving into the ground where he had been standing. Vel winced with a slight grimace. He'd have to get used to not having a hand, or much of a forearm. Uh, sorry about that. The staff whipped back into the air, flipped so the razor edge was facing them, and came hurtling back towards them at head height. They dropped to the ground, the rush of wind in the wake of the weapon sending them tumbling across the sand. Attila, with his hands clenched tight around his hat, shouted at the others. We need a plan! Any ideas on its weaknesses? Weaknesses? Evan jammed a finger towards the statue, even as it was arching its arm back for another swing. It's a four-story stone statue with a staff the size of a mushroom tree. It doesn't have any weaknesses. Good point. Oh, I know. Attila, still convinced the ancient monolith was an alien relic, stood and raised both hands in the air. We come in peace. The statue paused its attack, its red eyes focused on Attila as it seemed to consider his declaration. It barely gave the merc time to celebrate before it lifted a massive foot and settled on squashing the tiny nuisance instead. Attila dove out of the way as a giant stone foot crashed into the sand, showering them all with grit. Plan B! Plan B! Brig gave a feral howl and leapt for the creature's ankles. He slammed his fists against stone, 
a power and force like that of a jackhammer. He heaved against the massive foot with all his strength and even tried to claw at the glowing runes in an attempt to topple the statue. The ancient machine took no notice. Attila let out a weak chuckle. Plan C? Evan snorted angrily and unsheathed his knives. He turned to the others. Get that portal locker out and head to the gate. I'll distract these things for you. But, uh, just make sure to keep it open long enough for me to jump through. The tiny merc tore off through the sand, leaving a trail of dust in his wake. You heard him. Let's get going, Vel ordered, pulling his brother up out of the sand with his good arm. The statue seemed to have anticipated their escape plan and took a mighty step in their direction. A cloud of sand enveloped them as the statue slammed its foot into the ground. Pursuing. Evan leapt across carved toes, scampered over the ankle and up the statue's leg. He began to scale the beast, all the while shouting at it in an attempt to gain its attention. Down here, uh, Pebble Brain? Okay, so it wasn't his best insult, but it had the desired effect. The statue stopped, mid-step, to bring down a heavy hand towards its own knee. Evan scrambled to the inside, narrowly avoiding becoming a two-dimensional smear as stone slammed into stone. It wasn't enough to hobble the creature, but as the hand pulled away, Evan could see chunks of rock falling from the point of impact. He could work with that. My granny punch is better than you. The rest of the group stumbled, coughing from the dust cloud only to collapse at the base of the swirling vortex. The gateway was resting on a perfectly sculpted stone spire as if the portal had been placed on the point intentionally. Curious, Eric thought as he spun the dial on the device. The colors muddied into cold grays and murky blues as the vortex began to spin in the opposite direction. Evan dug his knives into every available recess, using them to scale the creature with ease. A few quick leaps from crack to crevice, and the statue was soon slapping at its own backside. The damage remained superficial, but Evan didn't need much. He skittered around the giant, throwing insults and laughing as the monolith succeeded in only slapping itself. It wasn't long before the tiny merc was standing atop the creature's cheek. He peered into one of its large, jeweled eyes. He blew a raspberry at his reflection, and then laughed as a shadow began to envelop him. Wing it on, boy brain! Evan shouted, diving out of sight as the statue slammed its own palm into its face. Attila turned to see the towering stone monster swinging erratically at what he could only assume was Evan. The terrible sound of stone crunching against stone filled the void of the desert silence. Do you think he's okay? He turned back to face the others, concern written on his scrawny features. Thou rolled his eyes. I'm sure he's fine. At the very least, he's doing better than you two. Like the sound of a punctured balloon, Briggs' ego deflated. He pulled his features into an undeniable pout and muttered something about still having both of his arms. Now's not the time to start. Eric put a hand up to stop his brother from retaliating. He then used that hand to point at something that was barreling towards them on the horizon. What is that? The statue teetered and wobbled, trying to stabilize its footing. A sudden force caused the statue to collapse, catching itself on its elbows just as it crashed into the ground. Plumes of sand and dust billowed into the air, threatening to wash over them. Hey, I take it back. He did manage better than us. Brig let out a hearty laugh and slugged Vel playfully on his arm. Or rather, what was left of it. A tiny voice carried out over the sand, stemming from the rapidly approaching form. Go, 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 go! The beaked head of the statue rose from the ground, light from the sun glinting off a single glowing eye. The other 
was an empty, shattered socket. The creature opened its mouth, straining with the effort, and released an ear-splitting screech. The power runes on its body flared before it lunged on all fours. It stretched out its arm, fingers flexing to wrap around them. Evan barreled into Attila, who collapsed against Avel, who tugged on Brig, who knocked into Eric, and in a moment of pure chaos, they floundered into the portal as a jumble of tangled arms and legs. It was like being a pair of shoes tossed into the spin cycle of a washing machine. They tumbled and collided with one another, spinning in unpredictable directions, and even smacking against the sides of reality. Attila was just starting to turn an alarming shade of green as they were ejected from the gateway and plunged into the icy waters of an ocean. And then they were being pulled farther out into the murky gray open waters, the surf threatening to drown them. The others scrambled for the surface, scattering the silvery fish that lurked below. Vel spluttered, blinking his eyes against the blackness of the deep. He kicked his feet furiously, his one hand lashing against the water to pull himself up. He managed to just get his head above the surface, gulping in lungfuls of cold, salty air when a wave crashed over him. It spiraled him away from the group and pushed him deeper down into the darkness. His cybernetic body was not designed with buoyancy in mind. He could just make out the sandy ocean floor when something snatched a hold of his coat. Eric had dove beneath the crashing waves, his fingers groping around in the darkness. Hoping that what he had grabbed onto was indeed his brother, he turned and headed back for air. Lest he pull them both down to a watery grave, Vel wrapped his good arm around his brothers and, ignoring the burning in his lungs and muscles, kicked against the swells. With much effort, the two of them broke free to the water's surface. Eric spluttered, his own muscles growing fatigued. He gulped down another breath as a frothy wave crashed over him. <coughs> and he spluttered, trying to catch another lungful of air before the next onslaught of cold water washed over him. <coughs> there! The others had broken through the surf and were crawling across the shallows. Evan had hitched a ride on Briggs' back, panting to catch his breath. Attila had collapsed face first into the drenched beach, covered in tangles of damp water plants. Eric continued tugging his brother along until they had broken through the surf themselves. They washed ashore like two lumps of driftwood and pulled themselves up onto a sandy beach that was hidden in an alcove beneath a weathered stone arch. Eric heaved in wet lungfuls of air, crawling in broken strides away from the crashing spray and foam of the cold, angry waters. I lost my hat, Attila whimpered, rolling over to gaze up into the drab gray sky with a sullen, albeit sandy, look. Eric slumped against the stone face of the alcove, realization sinking in. He pulled the battered and broken portal locker from his pocket. A stream of water and gravel cascaded from a sizable crack in the device. He turned it over, his face falling as he did. Wires and circuitry were exposed from a gap where the housing had shattered. Well, we have a problem. He looked up, expecting to see his brother sitting with the group. But he was not among the soaked survivors of the ocean's wrath. Vel was standing just outside of the safety of the alcove, staring up at the rocky arch. His face had gone bone white as he looked wide-eyed around him. There was something familiar about this beach and the stone structure. There was something familiar about the hexagon-shaped rocks that protruded from the cliff face. Vel, what is it? Eric asked moving out from the shadow of their safety. A memory resurfaced of two boys catching fish from these very waters with homemade rods. Vel turned, his eyes meeting Eric's, a ghost of a smile pulling at the edge of his mouth.
We're home. Of Monsters and Mushrooms, an ongoing series by Leslie Heron, is a crossover fanfiction mixing her own characters and settings with a few of those created by author J.D. Wiley. She writes for the fun of devising new ways of messing with her characters and seeing just how much trouble they can get into. What's that beeping? Hmm? Oh, hey! It looks like one of our old Class 1 probes was activated. Really? On which planet? Uh, looks like Fenteon 653. The desert planet? Wasn't that the probe we made look like a giant statue, so nobody would suspect it was aliens? Yep. Looks like some bugger went and invented electricity down there. Well, damn. So much for a peaceful weekend. <sighs> I'll go get my invasion gear.